grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when you're ready. My name is Carolyn Briggs and I'm one of the elders of um, the Bonwara. So it's the area from the Werribee River to the Wilson's Promontory. So I'm on this um, project with uh, Natalie on the Two Bay project because we're working with uh, the Two Bay project Pelican because of the um, history of this bay. It's also what's impacting on the bay as well and what lies beneath the bay. And it's also about the connection of the river. The connection which is really the Yarra River. The Yarra River still runs under this bay. And, it, and then there's a major waterfall which is down near Point Nepean or Mon Ma. And what it is is telling the stories that our ancestors legacies of what they told the story to the early settlers and that's recreating those stories and giving an understanding we already understood what was going on in breaking law with nature but we don't appreciate you know nature plays a major role in our lives particularly this bay so with all the changes that are occurring I the dredging or the climate change or but this gives us an understanding but it's also helping us re reconstruct history for all children to understand how they fit, how they connect, how um, science can help us understand what's going on and maybe see where we can be players again in trying to protect the, our assets. The bay is our asset today, but it's also the link between the port of waterfall, the river that runs beneath to Melbourne and goes up to the mountains in the Wurundjeri country or Wurundjeri country. So it's understanding how everything has to fit within our natural resources um, how things change over the generations. We need to understand that more. We need to understand that um, that Aboriginal people told these stories and continue to tell the stories of the stories of Melbourne and the creation of Melbourne. So that's why we're involved and a lot of some of the Indigenous kids will be coming on this project to help them to empower them to understand where they fit in this new paradigm of history and stories and how they would voice the stories to them and hopefully build them as leaders for our future with non-Indigenous kids as well. And could you explain about how uh, a little bit more about the waterfall and how you said the law was broken? Well, that's the story. Ningaru, or Old Man Bembo, told the story that was told to him from his grandfather, his father, father grandfather, and before. And uh, the story goes that we were in conflict with our other tribal groups. Maybe it's the land issues, maybe it's marriage lines. But the issue was we were over-killing our fish during spawning time not always eaten. We were in conflict with our neighbours, as I said. Uh, we were um, not respecting the laws, and this is when Bundle's law came into play. But the nature paid back. Nature, the bay started to encroach, and then the ice age came, and then the bay filled up completely about six years ago. So. Um, this here, the river ran and there was a large flat plain. So he, Dingaroo tells the story to the early settlers about how they broke law. And then the law was brought back. Bunjil created the law and the old wise people realized they were losing lots of their land. So they went to Bunjil and Bunjil then went out to where we know as Black Rock pointed the spears 
and stopped the sea from rising, which would have reclaimed the whole of their country. So we have a, a thin, narrow strip that goes all the way down to now, where if you think about this space and that mm -hmm. space, it's very small. Mm. And um, one of the laws that Bunjil taught the Bon Morang was that they must welcome all visitors, but they must require all visitors to make two promises, not to harm the land of Bunjil or the children of Bunjil. And you will go with safe. There's all these rituals that go along, the cleansing, the giving of water, the um, accepting the laws as you journey our country, and it's about safe passage. It's about understanding the connection between the life of natural resources and the human life resource as assets for the... We must continue voicing. We must remind people. If we broke law, they're breaking law. Mm -hmm. So how do we work together to reconstruct and rebuild the asset we got? Or is this, this going to be final journey and we hope not right. I always have hope we've got science as yourself as a scientist we've got scientists on board we need to understand how science views this world and how we review this world and that builds that partnership and the opportunity to be a part of this whole project mm. is a learning on both ways two-way learning 